I'm gonna show you a way to keep iMovie running smoothly by reducing the size of your iMovie library, particularly when you're working on very long projects or working with very long media clips with large file sizes. Rather than unnecessarily importing gigabytes and gigabytes of long media clips, you know, entire camera recordings, pre-trim your media before you even import it into iMovie. Go through your footage and extract the stuff you might actually use in your editing project, the good stuff. What's known in professional video editing as your selects and only import your selects, the good stuff, into your iMovie library. Now I do this all the time, particularly when I only need a few clips of footage from a really long recording, like one of my two plus hour live stream recordings or a video podcast. Not only will pre-trimming your footage save valuable space in your iMovie library, it'll help you become familiar with the material you're editing, which is an important part of a professional video editing workflow. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can pre-trim your footage right on your Mac for free. The first way is to use Quick Look. This is my preferred method because it's quick and it's simple to use. All right, to trim and save video clips using Quick Look, locate the long clip of footage you wanna extract your selects from. For this demo, I'm gonna use one of my two hour plus live stream recordings but you can pre-trim long camera recordings or long pieces of stock footage, pretty much anything. I'll select my long clip, then I'll hit the space bar on my keyboard, and that launches the selected clip in Quick Look. And it immediately starts playing back. Now you can pause playback by going down to the lower left of the Quick Look interface to the playback controls and selecting the pause button, which toggles with the play button. So to trim and save the clips, I want to use from this long clip, my selects, I go up to the top right of the interface and select this little trim button. The timeline turns into a trimming interface, the familiar trimmer bar. To play the clip, I can click on the big play button on the left here, or if I click on the trimmer bar first, I can hit the space bar on my keyboard to play my clip. Otherwise, hitting the space bar will close Quick Look. You can also scrub through your clip by clicking anywhere inside the clip, and you'll get this tiny little red playhead that's really hard to see. And you can click and drag on that playhead to scrub through your clip. You can also scrub back and forth through the clip using the multi-touch surface of your Magic Mouse, or you can scrub by scrolling on your trackpad. To trim and save the part of the clip that I want to use, I click and drag the left yellow trimming handle to set the end point of my selection. Another way to set the end point is to place the red play bar at the beginning of your selection, then hit the I key on your keyboard to set the end point. Likewise, to set the out point, place the playhead at the end of your selection, then hit the O key on your keyboard. Or I can just click and drag on the right yellow trimming handle to set the out point of the selection that I want. Now to get more precise with setting your in and out points, you can zoom into the trimmer bar by clicking and then holding for a moment on a trim handle. This will show you the individual frames of a clip so you can scrub through frame by frame. Now, if you're not happy with the selection you've made, you can go up to the top right of the interface and select revert and that will reset the trimmer bar. Now I'm happy with my selection, at least for this demo. So I'll go up to the top right of the Quick Look window and select Done. I get a dialog asking me if I want to save my selection as a new clip, or if I want to replace the original clip with my selection. Now 99% of the time, you want to select New Clip. In most cases, you do not want to be saving over your original footage. I'll select New Clip, and I get the usual save dialog to save my selected clip out to a folder where I'll save all my other selects. So I'll name the file and save it. Now the great thing about Quick Look is that it doesn't transcode your clips when it saves them. It doesn't compress them or anything like that. So your trimmed clips maintain the same quality as the original long clip, which is what you want for editing. To get out of Quick Look, you can click on the little 
X button at the very top left of the Quick Look window. So that's pre-trimming your footage using Quick Look. But you can also pre-trim your media using QuickTime Player. Again, locate your long clip of footage, right-click or control-click on it, and from the menu, select Open With, and from the other menu, select QuickTime Player. The clip opens in the QuickTime Player playback window. Now you can play back and pause your clip by hitting the big play button or by hitting the space bar on your keyboard. To trim and save your selects, we go up to the QuickTime Player menu bar and select Edit. And from the menu, select Trim. Or you can use the handy keyboard shortcut, Command-T. Up pops the familiar trimmer bar. And like the trimmer bar in Quick Look, you play and pause with this big play button on the left or hit the space bar on your keyboard. Click anywhere on the clip in the trimmer to get the little red hard to see playhead. Scrub through the clip by clicking and dragging the playhead or again by scrolling with your trackpad or the multi-touch surface on your magic mouse. Click and drag on the yellow trim handles to select the in and out points of the selection you want to trim and save. Place the red play bar at the beginning of your selection, then hit the I key on your keyboard to set the in point. Likewise, to set the out point, place the playhead at the end of your selection, then hit the O key on your keyboard. And like in Quick Look, for more precise scrubbing, just click and hold for a moment on a trim handle to zoom into the clip and scrub frame by frame. To get out of the trimming interface and leave your clip untouched, hit the Cancel button. Now there's no way to reset your selection here in QuickTime Player. There's no Revert button like there is in Quick Look. You'll have to just manually reset the trimming handles and start again. Now to actually trim and save my selection, I hit the Trim button right here. Now, unlike Quick Look, QuickTime Player doesn't give you a dialog to choose whether to save your trimmed clip as a new clip or to replace the original clip. QuickTime Player automatically creates a brand new file for the trimmed clip, temporarily labeled Untitled. But you still need to save it out. A couple ways to do that. You can close the QuickTime Player window, which seems a bit counterintuitive, by clicking the little red X button in the top left corner of the window you'll get this save dialog to name and save the clip. Now, another way to save your trimmed clip is to go up to the QuickTime Player menu bar and select File, Save. And you get the familiar Finder Save dialog, name and save your trimmed clip to the folder containing your other selects. And just like in Quick Look, saving your trimmed clip in QuickTime Player keeps your trimmed clip at the same quality as the original clip. Now, if you don't believe me, <laughs> you want to check that out for yourself, you can open the trimmed and original clips in the QuickTime Player Movie Inspector and compare the data. When you're done pre-trimming all the clips for your iMovie project, just drag and drop them from the folder you save them to into an event in the iMovie Media Browser and start editing. And if you miss something or you want to extract additional clips, just go back to your original clip and follow the same pre-trimming procedure.